Greetings, my name is Paul French, and I'm speaking to you from the beautiful Eden Chapel at Our Lady of Mount Carmel Church in Chicago, where I'm the music director. But I also wear the hat of the president of the board of directors of the American Federation of Puerto Cantores. Puerto Cantores is the student choral organization of the Roman Catholic Church with federations in nearly 40 countries around the world, and whose choirs involve tens of thousands of young singers. Here in the United States, the American Federation was founded in 1953. Our work, our mission is the evangelization of young singers through the medium of sacred music. For we believe that the singing of a profound choral repertoire can have a dramatic impact on the lives of young Catholics, helping to root them ever closer to the Catholic Church. AFPC's main focus is to organize choral festivals in dioceses throughout the United States, inviting both parish youth choirs and parochial school choirs to participate. We present three types of choral festivals, treble voice festivals for grades four through eight or grades four through 12, mixed voice festivals for students in grades four through 12, and high school festivals. The treble and mixed voice festivals are presented in context of mass, where choirs prepare the music for an entire liturgy, which is held at the local cathedral or basilica or a church of an esteemed architecture. At these festival masses, the local cardinal or bishop or ordinary often presides, allowing them an opportunity to interact with their young flock. Our high school festivals are offered as mini masterwork festivals, wherein the choirs will prepare a great choral work and then present it in a concert format. At all of these festivals, they are a tremendous opportunity to grow your choir by growing their sung repertoire, by offering an, an exciting event for, for your choristers, and by having their families come together on festival days to worship together and to delight in seeing their children singing so magnificently. And as such, we encourage your entire choir to participate in our festivals, not just a few of your singers, but the entire choir. One of the most significant ways to make this happen, getting your entire choir to participate, is to plan early. Get the festival date on your school calendar or your parish calendar as soon as possible. Work with your principal, work with the athletic staff of the school to identify potential conflicts. Notify parents at the absolute start of the choir season that their choir, your choir will be participating uh, in a festival, requesting that they save that date. Inform them of the time commitment and the expectations of the day. And as I do, I encourage you to send reminders to the parents in the fall and in the winter and in the early spring, in the days and weeks leading up to the festival so that parents can continue to make sure that they have that date uh, set aside for, for their child. Uh, some directors find it helpful to assign a choir parent with some of the, the tasks involved with uh, the festival day, whether it's uh, collecting the fees, collecting the liability and media release forms, collecting the child protection certificates, etc. So what are the costs involved with putting your choir into a Puri Contouris event? Well, simply to participate in a festival, your choir must be a member of the American Federation of Puri Contouris. And there is an annual fee of $150 to be a part of Puri Contouris. Uh, in addition, there is a festival fee, whether it's a mixed voice festival or a treble festival or a high school festival, of $25 per singer. These fees go to rent the spaces we sing in. They go to pay the stipend of the guest conductor and the organist who work with us. They go to provide a, a beautiful commemorative medallion that, that the choristers wear during the event. And they go to provide snacks uh, throughout the festival day. And the, for the break times. Uh, in addition to these two costs of $150 for your choir and $25 per singer, 
There is a modest fee of approximately $5 per singer in terms of music that you would need to purchase. Um, the majority of the music sung at our festivals is provided at no cost downloadable materials and AFPC really does a remarkable job in preparing excellent editions of traditional repertoire. We do all that we can to keep your costs down. And that said, the financials should never prohibit your choir from participating in our festivals. We have a wonderful Hannon Music Foundation scholarship to provide for whether your choir needs assistance in coming to the festival or when they, whether they need assistance in, in purchasing music. So don't let the financials stand in the way of having your choir participate. Reach out and we can help you with that. Having conducted dozens of festivals personally, I can offer truthfully that those choirs who have really prepared their music well have a great day. And those choirs that have prepared their music at sort of a minimal fashion and only maybe the days and weeks prior to the festival day really struggle. And toward that end, I, I, I encourage my fellow colleagues, my fellow choir directors to do all you can to, to get on the music early. It, it really pays off in great dividends when you're working with your singers. The choral repertoire selected by our conductor committee is practical. It's useful both for liturgical and concert settings. The repertoire list will be available to you in, in, in the summertime, and conductors are encouraged to begin to assimilate this choral repertoire early in the fall when you, when you gather your choir. For me here at Our Lady of Mount Carmel, we begin the Puerto repertoire in our first rehearsals of our treble choir um, in September, and we use the music throughout uh, the year at our school masses and our parish masses, a good portion of the Puerto Cantores repertoire, festival repertoire, is retained from year to year. So you're not starting from scratch each year learning uh, an entire repertoire of music. And so uh, I think we can take uh, consolation in that. We're only learning about 60% of the repertoire year on to year. AFPC partners with a fine music store in Lebanon, Pennsylvania called Lozer's Music and they offer a 25% discount on all titles on the AFPC choral repertoire when ordered through their store, another perk. AFPC also provides helpful teaching aids in the form of free audio recordings for both individual voice parts and accompaniment tracks. Pronunciation guides, text translations, and composer biographies are often found on the AFPC public domain editions. So who conducts our festivals? Well, AFPC has a roster of nationally esteemed Catholic choral conductors who both engage and inspire the gathered choristers, bringing this sacred music to life. Time and again, our conductors inspire the festival choirs and elevate the music making so that the choirs and we, the choir directors, leave the festival day on a real high note. In terms of the repertoire, for some choirs, the repertoire is a stretch. It's just not the music you sing. And for other choirs, it's no big deal. It's right in their wheelhouse. We try and find a middle ground to make sure that everybody feels that they can participate in the, in the, in the choral festival. For some, singing chant, singing in Latin, and singing polyphony is a real stretch. Uh, we regularly get questions from choir directors who are new to Pori Contouris festivals pertaining to the festival day and how best to prepare their choirs. And we simply say, learn what you can as thoroughly as you are able. If you're going to a treble voice festival and don't have any altos, don't worry about it have all of your choristers prepare the soprano part. Similarly, if you're going to participate in a, in a mixed voice festival and don't have any changed voices, any tenors or any basses, again, just prepare the parts that you are able to prepare. So what does a festival day look like? Well, a festival day simply is three rehearsals, attendant breaks for lunch and snacks, and then the festival and mass. Or in the case of high, uh, at the high school event, it's a concert. 
All told, the festival day lasts between six and seven hours. Choirs arrive, they check in, they get their medallions and are seated for the first rehearsal. So that every, conduct so that every chorister can see the conductor throughout the day, choristers are seated by height, which actually is the most cumbersome part of the day. Three or four singers from individual choirs will end up sitting together, so do assure your more introverted choristers that they will have a friend sitting next to them. Uh, to that point as well, conductor, uh, choristers are encouraged to meet new, new friends throughout the rehearsal day. I've had singers keep in contact for years with friends they met at a, at a Pori festival. At a few of our mixed voice festivals, you will be joined at the final rehearsal by young seminarians, both to provide a boost to the tenor and bass sections, but also to put a face on vocations in your local area. It's a wonderful initiative that Pori Contouris has started in the last years. The festival part of the day is the prelude to Mass, where individual choirs have the opportunity to perform a single piece, and then the combined choirs gather to sing two or three choral works before Mass begins. All choirs, all choir directors, are encouraged to have your choirs sing in the preludes. The affirmation you and your singers receive from the assembled congregation is always a shot in the arm. If you wish to have your choir participate, you will want to register early for the festival to secure your spot, as the numbers of choirs that are able to uh, perform individually in the choral preludes is limited. As far as the age limitations go for the festivals, um, our Treble Voice Festivals, as I said, are fourth grades through eighth grades or fourth grade through twelfth grade, as our mixed voice festivals are 4th through 12th grade and our high school festivals are 9th through 12th grade. Every year we get questions. Their young brother or sister is singing at a festival. Can they, can they join? They know the music. And it's a difficult response, but we have to say no. And it's simply an age reality. Um, second and third graders don't have the stamina to survive the day. It's a long day. Three rehearsals and mass is a long day. And we found that even though they can handle the musical piece, the younger singers just don't have the stamina to engage throughout the day. And so we really ask that you do not have younger singers, singers younger than fourth grade, participating in the festivals. Um, AFPC also requires that each choir provide their own chaperones and that we ask that you have one chaperone for every 10 singers in your, in your choir. If your choir is like mine, those parents will really vie for that opportunity to be a chaperone and to, to really sort of be an eyewitness to the day, watch the rehearsal process at hand. And so it's, it's not so much a difficulty to find chaperones. And they really do help out with, with preparing lunch, cleaning up a little bit afterward, and just making sure should any singer get sick during the day, that there's someone on hand to assist. Uh, festival, at festival attire, what should your choir wear? Well, if you have choir robes, uh, your choir will put them on at the conclusion of the last rehearsal and then wear them for the festival and the, and, the, and the liturgy. They certainly won't wear their robes throughout the rehearsal process. If your choir is like mine, we don't have choir robes. They, uh, they wear their formal school uniforms throughout the day, and that's fine. If your choir doesn't have formal uniforms or, or choir robes, uh, many choirs opt to wear a similar color, be that all black or a white, a white shirt or blouse and black pants or a skirt. What you wear is less important than your participation, I assure you. Um, and I would just say in conclusion that singing in these Pori Contouris festivals over the years has really grown my choirs in many ways. It certainly has grown its repertoire. Having to learn two or three new pieces every year uh, is a challenge, but it's also one where all of a sudden I've got all of this repertoire to sing at school masses and parish, parish masses. Um, I would also say that my kids love going to festivals. It's a great day to make music, but it's also a great day to meet so many new singers of the hundreds of children participating. And so it's a great day for them to, to, to look around and say, oh, it's just not my choir that's singing this music. 
um, uh, that the church is broader than just our little corner of the world. Um, and I, I would say that parents leave these events thrilled to have witnessed the work that we're doing, both as choir directors and the work that the church can do in their lives. Um, and they witness this significant experience of church, of sacred art, and of fellowship, and, and they just really leave uh, thrilled by it. So it's, it's a great thing for you as a choir director, it's a great thing for your families, it's a great thing for your parish and or school. So we look forward to welcoming you to a coming Puerto Cantores Festival, and do reach out if you have any questions. Thank you.